If you want to collect primary data based on images, there's a useful common resource. And there, these common resources are basically image tile servers by folks like Google or Bing or OpenStreetMap or other services. They serve up image data or map data that you can load and see in the background. Now, you can't edit them. You can't change them. You can't copy them to your own location, but you can still access them and digitize on top of them, so they're quite useful. But you first have to learn how to load an image tile service. Now, you load those in QGIS through a browser, and the panel might not be active. And so I have to click again in this view panels and go select the browser panel and turn it on. And then I get this panel that shows up here at the top. I can make it a little bigger so we can see. One of the entries part way down is this XYZ tile service. And you can see there's one open street map that already exists in mine. I can drag it down to my layers. And now I see I have this open street map panel showing up. And so I can zoom and look at information on these. Often just as a background for a display, you might want one of these when you're creating a map. But if you're digitizing new data, you typically don't want to digitize on top of data that already exists. You rather want to use aerial images. So I'll go ahead and right click and remove this layer just like I would any other layer from my view. Now, if that's only one there, there's no image service, I can't really do much. But if I right click on that XYZ tiles and select new connection, I can enter the details for new connection. So for example, for Bing Maps, I could go online and look up what the URL is for their image tile service. In this case, I've looked it up already before, so I can copy and paste it to my location here where I enter the URL and say, okay, and now I have a Bing Maps tile service. And if I drag that down in, it should show up for my study area, the images. So if I want to zoom in to the area I want to digitize, I'll zoom to this Randolph study area layer. Lo and behold, here's the Bing Maps in quite a high level of detail. Now it takes a while to paint up, but I can see individual buildings and trees on this Bing Maps tile service. If I wanted to enter the Google Maps tile service, I would start a new connection and I might call this Google Satellite. I'll just call it Sats. I have to go to my internet list or pre-saved list and enter the URL for the Google set, which I just looked up through an internet search, Google Tile Services. I can then drag that down and now I see I have a slightly different set of images for the Googles. Now they might actually be the same image. They might buy them from the same third-party source. Um, but in this case, they look like they're slightly different images. So you see the cars in the parking lot are different between the Google and the Bing Maps. They're taken at different times. So I can access data then and interpret on these various features. If I wanted to digitize, for example, buildings, I could load the Google or the Bing Maps and digitize the outlines of buildings. These are high enough quality that I could get their outline. Now, I'm not sure of the, the locational accuracy of these. I'd have to go back after the fact and test that. They don't send you information, but generally these satellite data are good to within a pixel, a pixel and a half, two pixels, something like that, or a couple of meters in this case. So they're quite a useful data source. So remember, there's these XYZ tiles which you get to by displaying the browser, and then I can look up the URL, right click and add a new connection. Now the great thing is once I've set up a connection, I saved this project, when I load the project back up, it knows that these connections are there. It saves this information and they come automatically. So I could have a shell project that has the Bing Maps and Google Sats and any other tile services set that have just called my generic project and just make a copy of that for any new project that's going to be using these sources. So I don't have to enter them every time. Quite useful for digitizing for a background or for interpreting information or as backgrounds for maps just for general localization.